Hey guys, I am Big and Scary. I'm bringing you another StarCraft II replay, this time on Entombed Valley between Gosu's STX and Empire's Violet. Empire Violet's going to be in your bottom right corner playing the Red Zerg. In the top right corner, you have Gosu's STX as Blue Terran. Uh, STX is a pro American player, uh, Grandmaster, and so is Empire Violet, though he is from uh, Korea. And I, I guess he's over here now. I don't know. Red versus blue means this is on the ladder, I'm supposing. Uh, Entombed Valley, though. MLG is the... Uh, I got this off of Dropbox, basically. And uh, they said that this was the MLG version of it. Meaning that there's no high yield right here. Uh, I don't believe that that's on the ladder right now. I could be wrong. You could tell me if I'm right in the comment section. Or you could tell me if I'm wrong. That would work, too. That would work, too. Basically, what I'm saying is maybe this isn't on the ladder. That's all. I'm, that's all I'm trying to say there. Supply depot going down for STX is going to do the wall off right here. Uh, not grabbing an early gas means no early tech with the uh, barracks going down to finish off that wall off once another supply depot needs to, needs to come down. Looks like Violet is uh, just min making drones droning hard right now. No gas. No. Uh, spawning pool and he's almost at 300 gas and with this drone going out it looks like he's going to be taking an expansion early yep there goes that on that hatchery uh looks like his drone's going off in one direction and then two other overlords are heading off into both the other ones so he's he's going to do the complete scouting you can look at the mini map and see that he did scout this location right here make maybe make sure that there was no proxies going down in that direction he'd also poke in there to see uh the overlord if it was taking a circuitous uh route trying to avoid the other person's drone just for a couple extra seconds of scouting orbital command coming down still no gas out of stx means that he's probably going to be taking an early expand with that scv positioned the way it is then that is increasingly likely uh, i don't believe that drone's going to be able to prevent that expand from going down as there goes the cc spawning pool is now finally down for violet uh, once that pops, you can see he's saving up a little bit of money for once the overlord goes off He's going to be able to get two different queens Once the uh, hatchery finishes both queens will come out at the same time with the same energy meaning that the larva injects will line up nicely Double gas coming out of STX means that he's going to try for some uh, tech now that he's secured that early expansion For single marine out now. He did scout successfully uh, This little SCV making sure that there's no early third uh, He'll probably poke up here too just because this is traditionally the, th the third even though it's uh, far far away From the normal natural the destructible rocks positioned right here can open up that third so it's easier to take and easier to hold Command center finishing up at the early expo. He's got a factory on the way now um, I would not be surprised to see Hellions come out of this factory, especially if this barracks decides to throw down a reactor at some point. But there's those two queens that I was talking about. Uh, it doesn't look like... Oh, there she is. Looks like both queens are moving down. Uh, queens that are positioned right here can prevent those Hellions if they do decide to come out. And we can see a reactor is now being built by STX. So Hellions are definitely on the bracket unless he's going for some early siege tanks. Uh, which would be uncommon just due to the size of this ramp. But what I'm saying is these two queens can position themselves on the uh, on the ramp, preventing those Hellions from doing a run-by, and all those Hellions will be able to do is hit this base, and if a properly positioned spine crawler or one other queen can really shut down the Hellion harass. So these three queens are going to do awesome, awesome wonders to protect that base from any sort of Hellions come out. That barracks finished off its reactor, picked up, and... Uh, lift it off and switch places with the factory is now going to be dealing out two hellions at a time those hellions are going to be great for map control uh, their mobility can really limit the uh, map vision that zergling zerglings can afford just because those zerglings just melt away under the uh, flames from the hellions the roach worn though is an excellent answer to that the uh, roaches with their armor just take significantly less damage from hellions with their flames um it's it's an excellent choice in this sort of situation we can see another another reactor going out this one's probably meant for the barracks it's building it right now marines will definitely be used to support any early siege tank play uh, as well as any any anti-air 
that's needed against Violet. Two Hellions come in, poke, see the two Queens have to back out. The Queens with their buffed range uh, really can do a good job at holding off those Hellions. What they want to do is catch any creep tumors being made and deny that creep spread because Zellions, uh, Zerglings on creep can catch Hellions in a corner, especially if they have their speed, which is almost done now. You saw earlier that those Hellions poked up into the third just to check to see if it went up, and if it did, they could have decimated that probe line there, but it looks like Violet was playing a little bit more passively. He did send in a single Hellion just to see what was inside. He didn't want to blow a entire scan, because that's a lot of minerals that you don't get by wasting a, wasting a mule. The energy that could be used for a mule is instead used for a scan. Roaches come out. You can see that all five of those Hellions hit the single Roach, and they only did around 30 uh, damage which is just terrible. It's just absolutely terrible uh, against these roaches, but they're so slow. The only way these roaches are going to hit them is if they back them into a corner, and these roaches are going to be pushing these hellions down, but there's creeps already spread there. Some queens, uh, some zerglings, and a roach make it up there, and they just sandwich these roaches. Or the roaches sandwich the hellions, and the hellions, two of them go down. A third one is in red, almost down. Two of them within 20 hit points of being dead. So it really looks like this Hellion Harass has been completely shut down just because of the massive creep spread. Just look at that. Would you just look at that? Uh, There's a lot of creep. The third going down, the destructible rocks are still up, which is surprising, but the hatchery's not even finished yet. There's no drones over there except for these guys uh, who are heading over there and are going to die very quickly. But the roaches are going to be able to catch the rest of those Hellions in that choke. I wouldn't be surprised to see these destructible rocks go down very, very quickly. Uh, now that the early pressure has passed, let's look at some tech. Banelin Nest going up. Banelins are going to be great against the marine heavy force that's coming out of STX. You can see plus one ground, plus one armor for Violet is coming out. Uh, all those are excellent, excellent choices, except maybe the plus one ground, meaning that he's going to rely more on Zerglings, less on Roaches against this. Uh, I tend to favor Roach heavy with some Hydras, but against those siege tanks which undoubtedly will be coming up uh, you know maybe uh, zergling infester play is better you can see the uh, reactor has been taken off of the factory and given to the starport so it's going to be double timing medevacs uh, at the same time a tech lab's going down on the factory so that it can get started on those siege tank upgrades excellent choice siege tanks are going to be great at controlling areas of the map and medevacs are fantastic for improving the longevity of your force Macro hatch and a hive, or no, a lair is going up. Lair is going to afford some excellent speed upgrades to the roaches. Some Hellions make it into the mineral line, but a quick reaction by Violet saves all the drones and forces the Hellions down. I'm surprised to see the uh, Hellion harassment continued. Yeah, it's, it's harassment, and harassment's always good, but with the medevacs on the way already, I would have expected drops at this point. I mean, we're 11 minutes into the game. Um, but maybe STX just wanted to continue with the harassment with this third going up. That was an opportunity for harassment that he did not have earlier, and maybe that's why that harassment wasn't as successful then. Fourth coming up, uh, it's also going to be very exposed to those Hellions. We can see another factory on the way with a armory uh, also being created, maybe just to up the ground upgrades. Maybe it's to buff the siege tanks even more medevac being loaded up that's going to go off for a drop meanwhile the two main forces meet up by the zelnaga watchtower uh, it looks like these forces are going to pull back but that's because this medevac was spotted by this creep which has been spread up into the south uh, the right side of the map those creep tumors do give map vision so when that medevac flew over uh, violet saw the incoming drop which can be an absolute lifesaver the biggest problem with uh, Zerg versus Terran are those drops. Uh, Zerg has to expand so much that it leaves them very open to different types of drops. You see another one happening down on the left side, poking at that hatchery, which hasn't finished. At the same time, this medevac decides to push in, see what's happening. A spore crawler finishes up at the natural, which forces the drop to take place up in the main, but two queens in that area are going to bring it down almost to red health. She begins to jettison her cargo, uh, one or two. Marines get lost there, but the medevac does make it out alive. This one has lost a single 
marine, but uh, it hasn't really succeeded in doing any damage to this hatchery. Uh, it's decided to maybe poke up here. But we can see that these drops have succeeded in stalling Violet, stalling uh, aggression that he wants to give to this expand right here. Uh, whenever Violet decides that it's time for him to move out against STX, he's really going to have to punish the Terran for taking so many different expansions. Uh, that third is definitely going to be one of the focal points of the attacks, but with these drops, Violet's not comfortable enough to push out right now and leave his bases undefended, even partially. SDX does push out with his siege tanks, would go down almost instantly. I don't think they got a single shot off. All the Marines have to stem to get away. Violet makes like he's going to make up into the third, but the Terran decides to push down just to see what was going on down into the uh, creep, forcing Violet to pull back. There's a drop going on. It looks like the Spore Crawler succeeded in taking out the Medivac. Those go down. The Queen didn't even go down, though she had eight hit points. Uh, that could have been a very serious drop, but quick reactions. Again, all that drop did was prevent Violet from going up into the third. You saw that he was making beelines for it. He wanted to do aggression there, but he couldn't because of the drop pressure that's happening right now with so many different expansions. That's a big weakness that Terran learns to exploit. Again, the Marines have to stem just to get away from the Zergling horde. The Zerglings come up here and deny that fourth and then push up at the supply depot wall. Unfortunately, these Zerglings aren't going to be able to knock down that wall without taking some massive damage because those Banelings can't get up to the front. Those Banelings really don't want to detonate on those walls. They want to get in there to that siege line, maybe even to those clusters of Marines. And they do. They do some significant damage. A uh, single siege tank is firing away. All the infestors are rather exposed on the south side. The Marines pulling in. Quick reactions out of Violet throws down some fungals just to allow those expensive uh, gas units to get away as the rest of the Zerglings uh, are cleaned up inside the main. The infestors, though, take a rather twisted route back home as Violet grabs a, uh, what is that expansion? One, two, three, four, five, fifth. A fifth expansion. Spires being finished up. More Banelings on the way. You saw those Banelings, how much damage they're doing to this Marine ball. Uh, there's really no heavy hitters in there. Not enough Marauders to absorb that sort of damage. It takes some very fast uh, reaction times, but with Fungal Growths going down to prevent their movements and Zerglings uh, encircling those groups, preventing them from running away. Those Banelings are just getting some massive hits. The Zerglings once again rushing in. You can see them surrounding those groups. Fungal growths go down and the Banelings pour in. Just massive, massive Baneling hits. Uh, completely sopping up the bulk of that army. Forcing it to go down. At the same time, some uh, clusters of Marines poke in with a scan. They take down some Creep Tumors. Not a lot, definitely not enough to soften the blow that STX took there. You can see up in the production tab the Greater Spire and Ultralisk Cavern are both going down. Uh, the income that Violet has right now is very impressive. And what he's doing is just teching up so that with the ground upgrades that he's already gotten, the, the level 3, the level 3, the 2-2 two, two right now, but 3-3 three, three is going to be finishing up shortly. And when it does, the Ultralisks that can come out, you can see the Chitinous plating has been started too, are going to be incredibly intimidating. And the Zergling Infestor army transitions very well with some Ultralisks in it. Sixth going down for Violet. As we can see, a Planetary Fortress has been finished up at the fourth. SDX has to keep a presence on the field to prevent uh, Violet from just mainlining it into that fourth. With a Planetary Fortress position there, he's not going to be able to lift it off and protect that investment. But that Planetary Fortress is going to be absolutely devastating, even to a number of Zerglings this large. The uh, splash damage from them is very significant. What's also significant is the amount, sheer amount of Broodlords coming out of Violet right now. He's got 11 on the way, uh, which is going to be an intimidating air army. We don't see any Corruptors out to protect against Vikings, but we also don't see any Vikings produced at all. So those v Marines are going to have to be the uh, main counter unit but we've seen the marines get absolutely mopped up by the banelings on the field no not a lot of banelings right now but those zerglings are definitely going to make short order of the uh, cluster banelings are i mean uh, zerglings and broodlords they kind of produce pretty much the exact same units but infestors 
making it so that those marines can't push away, can't stem and charge right underneath the uh, Broodlord army is very tough to deal with. We can see five more ultras on the way as Violet begins to lose Zerglings uh, and Fester's Broodlords. He's going to replace them with ultras, making it more impressive. But these Broodlords are very exposed right now. Not a lot of Zerglings left. Some massive stem from the marines as they rush in. Those 12 Broodlords are down to five, four now. Those Broodlords have taken a massive hit. Fortunately, all the Marines are now down. Uh, small forces left. Those Broodlords are still exposed, though. The Zerglings were definitely out of position for that place. But we can see that the drops have completely stopped. Violet's capable of forcing the aggression to be in one area, and he really likes to keep the uh, engagements in this very large open area where he can really utilize the, the ability of the Zerglings and the Broodlords and the Fungals to hold the enemy in place and get that perfect surround that he wants. Fungal goes down on the medevax, taking down the support structure there, but Violet wants to keep these broodlords alive, so he carts back, courts back a little bit, making it so that the uh, marines, even though they stemmed in, don't quite make it to the broodlords, don't quite do the damage they need to do. Uh, we can see that SDX producing quite a lot of marines, but they're getting mopped up just as quickly. Finally, all the Broodlords go down uh, at the cost of pretty much every Marine and the entire standing army that STX had at the time. And we can see that while this has been going on, all these Ultralisks have been built. We haven't seen any of those Ultralisks used in combat yet because Violet was just transitioning to them. He was using those brood, uh, Broodlords to keep pressure on STX. And while he's been doing it, he's really just destroyed the standing army of Violet. So now these incredibly heavy Ultralisks are going to sweep up virtually unopposed, two siege tanks, a handful of marines, uh, and now they're battling down the front door. Those Ultralisks are not going to have the problems Zerglings would have with a planetary fortress. They're going to do massive damage to the planetary fortress, and there's just not enough minerals for STX to mine from. So he GG's out of the game. It was a great game. Um, I really liked the transitions that Violet did and how seamless they were. He went from Brood Lords to Ultras, which is not something you see all the time. I really like the transition of Zergling Infestor to Brood Lord. Uh, it's, it's common and it's incredibly effective. That's why it's common. Uh, but you don't see Brood Lord to Ultralisks very much, and so that, that, uh, that made me happy. What else? The other things that make me happy is people who watch this game like you. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment if you want me to do something different. Um, or message me if you have a game you want me to cast. Either way, I am Big and Scary. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye.